Right now we are going to move to our last guest and I also wanted to remind that the panel session is going to continue right after uh, the last guest. So you still have some time to share with us questions for both Dr. Rossin and our last guest who is going to be uh, Dr. Bruno Gualano from University Sao Paulo. <laughs> So my name is Bruno Gualano, I'm an associate professor from the University of Sao Paulo, and today I will talk about the potential of creatine supplementation on glucose metabolism and diabetes. So these are my conflict of interests, uh, all of them are linked to Auschem, which is a company that manufactures creatine. And here we have a brief outline of this presentation. So I will start with a brief overview of uh, the effects of creatine supplementation on glucose metabolism. Then I will move to the main part of this presentation uh, where I will cover uh, a trial that you did here in Brazil uh, on creatine supplementation in patients with type two diabetes. And then uh, we will cover uh, basically three uh, aspects, the efficacy of creatine supplementation in these patients, uh, potential uh, underlying mechanism that could explain uh, the observed effects, and then uh, the safe aspects in this uh, trial. Uh, finally, I will uh, finish up with concluding remarks and uh, I will also uh, point out some perspectives in this specific area. So uh, we know that creatine supplementation may modify uh, carbohydrate metabolism. So uh, approximately uh, one century ago, you and colleagues uh, showed that creatine supplementation could uh, reduce glycemia in dogs. Uh, we also have more recent evidence showing that creatine supplementation, when combined with exercise training, can enhance glycogen uh, accumulation uh, in human beings. Uh, we also know that creatine can increase GLUT4 expression in healthy subjects, and we know that GLUT4 is, is a uh, important uh, candidate to explain uh, glucose uptake uh, through creatine supplementation. And uh, our group uh, uh, showed that creatine supplementation can improve glucose tolerance in sedentary young subjects. So uh, this is the background for our rationale uh, of studying creatine supplementation uh, as a insulin sensitizer, uh, especially in combination with exercise, because you know that exercise is a important tool uh, to improve uh, glycemic control in patients with type 2 diabetes. So, uh, based on this background, uh, we speculate that creatine supplementation in combination with exercise could uh, benefit patients with type 2 diabetes. Uh, regarding uh, the safety aspect of creatine, uh, we all know that creatine has a excellent safety uh, profile. Uh, there are several studies showing no detrimental effects of this supplement in healthy individuals, but little is known in people with pre-existing kidney disease. So we also test uh, uh, if creatine supplementation could be safe for people with or under risk for chronic kidney uh, disease, which is the case of patients with type 2 diabetes. So the main purpose of this study was to investigate the efficacy and safety of creatine, uh, as I told you, uh, combine it with exercise training in this population. Uh, 
let's cover some uh, main aspects of the methods. Uh, this was a 12-week randomized uh, controlled trial. Um, patients with type 2 diabetes were selected if they used metformin and sulfonylurea. Uh, if they had uh, glycate hemoglobin uh, inferior than 90%, if they had glomerular filtration rate, rate above 30 ml per minute, if, if they were uh, older than 45. So patients were given either creatine or placebo in a double blind fashion, as I mentioned before, and they were uh, uh, exercise trained in our uh, uh, intra-hospital uh, exercise physiology lab. So what you assessed in this study? At baseline, in after 12 weeks, we assessed uh, as a primary endpoint uh, glycate hemoglobin, uh, and also as a secondary uh, as secondary outcomes, we, are, we also assessed insulinemia, glycemia, C peptide after a meal tolerance test, uh, lipid profile, strength, muscle function, and aerobic conditioning, body composition through uh, DEXA and some enzymes involved in uh, liver uh, metabolism. As the main outcome of um, uh, the safety aspect of creatine, we assessed kidney function through the DTA clearance and also some markers of, uh, of uh, kidney damage, uh, including proteinuria, albuminuria, some electrolytes as well, and creatinine zero and urinary creatinine. Uh, we assessed uh, food consumption through three food recalls, and you also assessed uh, phosphoryl-creatine content using uh, phosphor-MRS technique. Uh, moreover, we assessed uh, GLUT4 uh, protein expression and also AMPK. Uh, using uh, muscles extracted through uh, muscle biopsies. So um, let me show you some uh, main results from this trial. Uh, let's start with uh, the baseline characteristics of our patients. As you can see, this is a very small uh, trial. Uh, we had more female than male. Uh, no significant difference uh, between groups for gender and also for the other variables that you can see in this table. Uh, as you can see, uh, aerobic condition as evidenced by PO2 max uh, was uh, quite low uh, in both groups. No significant difference between groups for the stages of chronic kidney uh, disease. So let's move to the main results. Uh, creatine was effective in increasing muscle phosphoryl creatine content, as you can see here in black bar. After the supplementation, cre uh, phosphoryl creatine increased uh, significantly uh, 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 in the creatine group, but not in the placebo group. So uh, this means that creatine supplementation was effective in increasing muscle creatine and in this case, muscle phosphoryl creatine content. And here uh, we have our main outcome, our primary outcome, which is glycate hemoglobin. Um, creatine supplementation was able to decrease uh, glycate hemoglobin versus the placebo group. Here we have the difference between the groups at post. And this uh, result was probably uh, uh, a consequence of the effects of creatine on glycemia. As you can see here, here we have the curve after the meal tolerance test, before the intervention, and then after the intervention. As you can see here, especially for the first time points, up to 60 minutes, creatine supplementation was able to decrease the curve of uh, uh, glucose. Here we have the same data represented as uh, the area under the curve of uh, glucose. Uh, as you can see here, creatine supplementation was able to decrease this curve as compared to 
pasivo. So, uh, what could be the mechanism uh, underlying these effects in terms of molecular uh, response? We assessed, looked for content, and um, it's possible to see that creatine supplementation did not uh, modify GLUT4 content, total GLUT4 content. Here we have dotted lines representing uh, data from healthy subjects. Uh, white bars representing placebo and black bars representing creatine supplementation, pre and post creatine supplementation or placebo. However, when you look at the uh, GLUT4 uh, translocated uh, to towards uh, uh, the membrane, the sarcolima, you can see that creatine supplementation was able to increase GLUT4 translocation. Uh, versus placebo. And this good for translocation, the creatine group was uh, pretty much similar to, uh, uh, to the levels seen in the health individuals. So that could be a mechanism explaining the uh, effects of creatine supplementation on lysina and ultimately on uh, glycate and hemoglobin. We also assessed AMPK. As I told you, uh, and as you can see here in this graph, you have delta change for AMPK, and uh, it's pretty clear that creatine supplementation uh, led to uh, increased AMPK versus placebo. And more importantly, AMPK was uh, directly uh, related to uh, uh, circling GLUT4 which represents in our study good for translocation. And it also observed a indirect association of AMPK content, delta AMPK content, and delta uh, glycine hemoglobin. So uh, the higher the uh, AMPK content, the lower uh, the, uh, the glycate hemoglobin. Uh, we also uh, observed that creatine supplementation wasn't able to change insulinemia, C peptide concentrations uh, after the neo tolerance test. Uh, some surrogates of uh, insulin sensitivity did not change following creatine supplementation, talking about HOMA index and GI index. Uh, lip profile, lean and fat mass, strength muscle function and aerobic condition were not affected by creatine supplementation as well. So what would be the potential mechanisms underlying these uh, anti-glycemic effects of uh, creatine supplementation? So uh, first, one may uh, hypothesize that creatine supplementation can increase uh, beta cell uh, insulin uh, secretion, as you can see here in the number one, uh, there are some uh, uh, data suggesting that th this could happen at least in animal models or cell models, uh, not uh, really in humans. Our uh, data, for instance, uh, do not support this hypothesis. Uh, creatine supplementation could improve water retention and uh, trigger or osmosensing genes uh, that could be involved in uh, glucose uptake. Uh, there is evidence in literature for this mechanism as well. There is a paper by Mark Turnopolsk's group showing uh, evidence uh, in this regard. Uh, also, creatine could, could increase glucose uptake via type, uh, type 2 glucose transporter, uh, four. Uh, increasing its content or activity. Um, we did not see that again in our trial. Uh, what you did see was a effect of creatine on group four translocation, and that could be a mechanism underlying uh, increased glucose uptake and ultimately the better uh, glycine hemoglobin, a better uh, glucose control in our uh, type 2 diabetic, uh, diabetic patients. Uh, 
it's also important to note that uh, as you we uh, tested the combined effects of exercise strain, it's possible that creatine supplementation could have uh, enhanced the effects of exercise on all of these mechanisms. And you know that exercise is able to improve uh, insulin signaling and also glucose uptake. That's why exercise is considered uh, a very useful therapy to patients with type 2 diabetes. So if you have a nutritional supplement increasing the effects of exercise, uh, we could have more potential effects on uh, glucose control in this population. So uh, in terms of uh, safety, uh, we assessed proteinuria and albuminuria, and we did not see any uh, 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 significant effect of creatine in those, uh, even when you look at patients who already uh, experienced albuminuria, uh, creatine supplementation here, we have pre and post data in these two uh, specific patients. Creatine supplementation did not provoke any for deterioration in this marker. So let's move uh, to the DTA clearance. Uh, as you can see here, creatine supplementation did not change the DTA clearance. Here we have placebo in white bars, and here we have uh, creatine. So uh, here in B, we have individual data. It's uh, it's possible to see that creatine supplementation did not provoke any substantial decrease uh, in EDTA clearance, suggesting that creatine supplementation does not affect uh, kidney function in patients, even in patients with pre-existing uh, chronic clinic, uh, uh, kidney disease. Also, creatine did not affect uh, solid reputation uh, Urea and uh, uh, the creatinine clearance. Uh, some enzymes involved uh, in liver uh, metabolism uh, were not affected uh, as well. And uh, we did not see any adverse events potentially linked to uh, this plantation. So uh, here was uh, where we started from creatinine conference 2000. 2010 in Cambridge, uh, Paul Greenhoff and I gave lectures on the potential role of creatine in glucose metabolism in this opportunity, calling the attention to the effects of creatine as a nutritional therapeutic strategy in diabetes uh, management. By the way, that's me here in the middle of the giants in this area. So, however, more than 10 years later, here we are. In a summarizing this recent review published in Nutrients, um, not much progress was made uh, in this regard, unfortunately. Um, so, to conclude, what you already know about the role of creatine as a anti diabetic supplement, and what, what uh, we still need to know about it. So, we know that creatine supplementation plus exercise uh, does improve uh, glucose control in type 2 diabetic patients. However, this was uh, an exploratory small-scale study, this one that I just showed you. So we had a limited sample size and also a short uh, follow-up. Uh, therefore, we really need to uh, replicate this study and uh, if possible, expand uh, both sample size and follow-up. Creatine seems to act through increasing blood for translocation in terms of uh, uh, mechanism, as we discussed. However, we didn't know yet if this is a direct or indirect effect of creatine uh, combined with exercise strength. That could be a effect of creatine enhancing the effects of uh, exercise and training. Creatine supplementation was shown to be safe. Actually, creatine has an excellent safe profile, especially in uh, healthy individuals. 
but uh, we also need confirmation uh, of this safety profile in more patients with pre-existing uh, chronic kidney disease. Once again, our study was a small scale one. So uh, in order to answer uh, this question, can creatine be used as part of treatment in type two diabetes? Uh, to be honest, only large randomized controlled trials will be able to give this information for us. So with that, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, all of my uh, colleagues uh, who uh, uh, helped us to develop all of these uh, studies that uh, I presented today, uh, the grants that support uh, our research in our lab. And finally, I'd like to honor my dear colleague and friend Jack Portmans, the old guy who sadly passed away a few days ago. Um, Jack was uh, really a pioneer in the area of exercise biochemistry and physiology. Uh, and he made terrific contributions to advance our knowledge in the field of creatine supplementation as well. In particular, uh, with seminal studies showing uh, uh, that creatine supplementation has a uh, very good safety profile. Uh, in addition, and more important, of course, uh, Jack was a so lovely man, a great friend, something that all of you who had a chance to live with him will agree with. And this is him with my little daughter, uh, like five years ago, in one of his several visits to my lab in Sao Paulo. So a big thank you from our team, Jack, for teaching us uh, so much and for being so generous to every, everyone around you. We you all uh, miss you. So with that, thanks so much for your attention. I will be keen to uh, answer any questions you may have. Gracias, thank you very much. Bye.